Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on match day. It is Thursday, of course, the Europa League finishes off with the Europa League group stages. Finish off tonight, Arsenal in action at home to FC Zurich, looking to guarantee their spot through to the knockout rounds as group winners. A win will do that against Zurich, who sit bottom of the table with one win so far. I think I was driving the kids to school this morning. I was listening on the radio and the bookie, one of the guys from the, the bookies was on. And I think gave Arsenal was 8-1 to one on for a win tonight. So the bookies very much favouring Arsenal. And I'm not surprised given Zurich's form this season. But they still have to go out there and get the job done. Going to be interesting to see exactly who starts that game. What Mikel Arteta decides to do in terms of his team selection with that massive game against Chelsea. Looming very large now on Sunday at lunchtime. Will that come into Arteta's thinking. I think it will, but I still think Arteta will name a few of those regular Premier League starters in the 11 tonight. Anyway, I'll finish off that video, uh, this video today talking about that and the predicted 11, that sort of thing. I will be at the game, so keep your eyes peeled for all the usual stuff from me at the Emirates later. But first of all, wanted to talk a little bit about what's gone on the last couple of or day or so at Arsenal. I was at London Colney yesterday. We did the open training session. Then we did a press conference where we spoke to Mikel Arteta and Gabriel Martin. And at least some really interesting quotes to come uh, out of those two chats with both Arteta and Martinelli. Clearly revolving around contract situations when Martinelli was up. We had to speak to Martinelli about his contract. And uh, Arteta spoke a little bit about that today as well. So a few quotes from those coming up I want to discuss. Uh, also, Arteta has been speaking a little bit about the upcoming transfer window and some of the difficulties Arsenal may well face uh, when it comes to January. So I'll discuss those as well. So let's start with contract, shall we? And Martinelli, um, who we spoke to yesterday, spoke really well, actually, Gabby. He came up, he had a translator next to him, didn't need him at all, spoke the whole thing in English. Um, his English is so good. It's come on so much when you, I think back to a couple of years ago when Martinelli you just looked like a little boy walking around Arsenal really really shy obviously English wasn't great and then I, I looked at him yesterday facing a room full of us probably about sort of 15 journalists there all firing questions at him you know questions about his contract his future and stuff like that and he handled it all so well really growing up uh, into a really impressive young man Gabriel Martinelli and um, yeah about the contract we obviously asked him and he said look I'm very happy at Arsenal I've said it many times this is my club I love to be here I love the city the club everything about Arsenal I want to stay I'm very happy and then he joked uh, he said oh they just need a pen uh, I then asked him um, I asked him you know is it are you worried about the whole thing becoming a distraction because let's face it whenever we speak to you we ask you about your contract is is that going to be a distraction and he said I really don't care I want to stay I want to score in the next game and do well and just help my team win games um and he said that before I mean, we spoke to Martinelli a few weeks ago in the mix zone after one of the games and he kind of said the same sort of thing and he makes it very very clear that he wants to stay at Arsenal um Martinelli's got about a year and a half left on his current deal. But Arsenal in quite a good place for him. Better place they are with him than they are with Saka and, Martin, uh, Saka and Saliba because they've got two-year options to take up on Martinelli. They don't want to take up that option because they know, they understand that all three of those players combined, Saka, Saliba, Martinelli, they need to be rewarded for how influential they are in their team, rewarded for where they are in terms of themselves as a player. If you just refresh, if you just take up that option on their current deals, you're basically just saying, OK, you're getting two more years, but you're staying on the same contract you're on now, which isn't worth very money, very much money. You do that to a player of Martinelli's stature now or Saka's stature now, you just annoy them. And um, it will make sort of getting them to sign fresh terms even harder. So they're, they're aware of that. And that's why they're, they're talking with all three of them and trying to get them to sign new fresh deals that tie into the club to a long time, but also reward them for where they are in the team right now. So that's what's going on with Martinelli at the moment. And we spoke to Arteta about it. And the quotes, we spoke to him yesterday. The quotes have been embargoed. They've just gone live today at midday. I've put a piece on gold as well, which you can read afterwards. But um, this is what Martin, uh, he had to say about the contracts. And he was asked, you know, would you want all three of them done now, ideally? Are you worried that it's going to run into the World Cup and beyond? Is that a concern to you? And this is what he had to say. He said, the contract has to be signed when all parties are happy and committed and are determined to do that. The timing sometimes is timed by moments, by feelings, individual circumstances, and you have to put all that together and make it happen. But I think we are in a good place. 
sort of encouraging words there right at the end from Arteta. I thought the very last thing he said about it said that we are in a good place. And he's kind of said that the whole way through. We've heard him speak positively in the past about Saka's situation and that that sort of thing. And this is a big thing for Arsenal. Make no mistake about it. These are three hugely important players to sign up, not just because of how good they are, but in terms of the value of all three of them. You know, you get these guys signed to long-term contracts, you are protecting yourself in terms of if someone does come in and look, it's football, it can happen. Real Madrid can come knocking. Barcelona can come knocking. And for someone like Martinelli, especially a South American, we know the lure of playing for those two clubs. It could be huge. And should that happen, you don't want to be in a situation where he's only got a year left on a current deal. You want him to be signed for four or five years. So if the worst was to happen, and I don't want it to, but if the worst was to happen, then you can get as much money as possible for a player. And Arsenal need to do that because let's face it, they've been beyond bad at selling players over the years. They've been dreadful. And um, they need to make sure that their best talent is protected on long-term contracts. And that's why it's so important these deals are done. Um, so that's what Mikel had to say on that. And yeah, hopefully, as he said right at the end there, that we are in a good place. Let me know, obviously, about what your thoughts are on this situation, about Saka, Saliba, um, Martinelli. How important is it that Arsenal signed sign uh, get them signed up very very quickly would you be worried if it went on towards the end of the season perhaps what do you make of martinelli's comments yesterday what do you make of arteta's comments yesterday anything like that let me know as always in the comments below now Mikel was also talking about the transfer window at yesterday's press conference those quotes have also just gone live at 12 o'clock because they were embargoed until today so you'll just be seeing them now probably on your timelines on social media they'll be coming out and he was asked about the transfer window and how difficult it might be how different it might be this January because of the World Cup because of the break before it you know will that make it easier because some you've almost got this pre-season in the middle of the season where you can really prepare because there's no matches going on or competitive matches going on because everyone's at the World Cup and this is what he had to say about it he said the planning for this period is extremely difficult first of all because we know the January window and how special it is the opportunities that you have and the short window that you have and obviously with the position that we're in right now as well it demands another level of player that player has to be available we will look at everything and let's see what we can do so that was an interesting line there where he said and obviously with the position that we're in right now it demands another level of player now you know the position Arsenal in right now obviously top of the Premier League table are they in a title race? I don't. We none of us want to say it, do we? But right now, look, we're a third away through the season. Arsenal are top of the table, so you have to say they are kind of in a title race at the moment. There's still a long way to go, but you know, Arteta will be thinking Arsenal are in a title race, no doubt about it. The club, you, when you get in this position, you have a start that you've just enjoyed, like Arsenal have. Then you have to be thinking, look, we can try. We've got to try and stay here. So he'll be thinking they're in a title race. And if you want to push to the next level and stay in that title race and compete with Manchester City through till May June. You know, in, if you are going to sign someone in January, they have to be decent players, good players, not just not just your average Premier League player. They have to be special to take you to the next level, to get into this Arsenal team, to provide competition for the likes of Saka, Martinelli, Gabriel Jesus, those sort of players. Um, so I thought that was quite an interesting comment from from Mikel there. Um, and look, I, I think Arsenal will be active in the transfer window in January. I'm not saying they're going to sign anyone because look, it is difficult. They wanted to sign someone last January. They couldn't do it um, because it just proved too difficult. And I think the position they're in does change things. It would be mad not to. If you're if you're Mikel Arteta, if you're Edu, if you're Josh Kroenke, Tim Lewis, whoever, and you're sitting there around the room, around the table, exploring the possibilities of signing someone in January, you've got to be saying, look, we are top of the table here. We have got a fantastic chance. Even not the title, but we've got a fantastic chance of making the top four, getting back into the Champions League and getting us back to where this, we think this club belongs. If you're not sitting around the table and in looking at that situation and thinking, you know what, we need to try and push the boat out a little bit in January here and get a couple of players in that can really help in the second half of the season, which is going to be a crazy second half of the season with the amount of games that need to be played. We need to give Mikel the tools to really push on and make sure we can get ourselves a top four spot. We can stay in the title race. So I think the position that Arsenal are in now has to change things for the January transfer window. If it doesn't, then it's just stupid from the club, in my in my opinion, because you've got to really push the boat out and try and stay take advantage of this start you have. 
Now, they want to sign a winger. That's clear. I, I spoke um, yesterday about... Uh, I'm going to get his pronunciation of his name wrong. I saw you all... Not all, but a few of you calling me up on it. I think I was calling him Facundo Torres. I think it's something like Facundo Torres, the proper pronunciation. I'm, apologies if I've just butchered that again. I imagine I have. I always do. But anyway, he's a player who's potentially on the agenda for Arsenal. Someone that they're talking about and that they're having meetings about. And that is the type of player that they're definitely looking at for January. Is that wide player to um, just to come in and provide competition and you know take the heat off Bukayo Saka a little bit on the right hand side? They would do it, try and for it in the summer. It didn't happen. Everything sort of changed with the injuries to defensive midfielders around the, that. Sort of made them start focusing on defensive midfielder more, and that didn't happen either. We know they got close on the final day, but couldn't get a deal done for David Luiz. At, not David Luiz. Um, my God, I've forgotten his name. The Aston Villa player, who name escapes me right now, which is ridiculous. I can't remember it, but you know what I mean. And they, and that stopped them really pursuing to try and get a winger over the line in the final days of the window. I fully expect them to go back and try and do that in January. I'm not saying they'll be able to, but I think they will. And um, I think what Arteta says there, you know, he, he knows it's going to be difficult, but I think he knows deep down as well how handy it would be if he could get at least one, perhaps two, who knows, players in, in the January window. So, yeah, I can't believe I'm talking about the January transfer window already. It just feels like the summer window's only just finished and already I'm thinking about January and the craziness that that's going to bring. Anyway, so that's enough of what Arteta had to say. Now let's talk about tonight's game with FC Zurich. Team selection is going to be really interesting, as I mentioned at the start of this video. What is Arteta going to do? How seriously is he going to take this? How strong is he going to go? How much is that game against Chelsea on Sunday going to be in his mind? Now, the good news from London Colney yesterday, you would have seen, obviously, because Saka was in training. Alexander Zinchenko was in training, uh, which was a very big boost. No Matt Turner, he wasn't in training, so I think Aaron Ramsdale's going to start tonight. I can't imagine Zinchenko is going to feature today. Maybe he'll be on the bench. But, you know, I can't see he's going to start. He's only had a couple of training sessions. He's been out since the Spurs game, which was over a month ago now. So I don't think you don't take any risks with Zinchenko. It's great that he's back, but I think you ease him back in. Like Arsenal been doing with Mohamed Elneny, who's been training for the last two weeks now. I wouldn't be surprised if Elneny starts tonight. Probably he'll be on the bench, but I wouldn't be surprised if he starts tonight because that could give you the option then of resting Martin Odegaard as well. There's no Granit Xhaka, obviously. He's suspended. So if you play... El Nenny is the holding midfielder, then you can move Sambi up to his proper position in the sort of number eight role, and you can play Sambi and uh, Vieira in the two more advanced midfield role and have um, El Nenny as the holder. Whether he does that, we'll have to wait and see. It's definitely an option. And Mikel saying yesterday that Mohamed El is in a very good place now after training for the last couple of weeks. So we'll wait and see if he's fit enough to start. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if he if he does make that. And and then you kind of look elsewhere. I think Gabriel will start at centre-back. One of those centre-backs is going to have to start. I think it will be Gabriel. Um, and then what do you do up front? We had a big discussion amongst us journalists at London Colney yesterday. Some people thought Gabriel Jesus might start I don't think so I think we'll see Ketia start and I reckon Martinelli might be the first team player who starts this one um, on the left hand side of the attack so lots of decisions for Mikel to make um, and I think you know he'll be it's certainly been considering him long and hard with that Chelsea game to come on Sunday so this is what I've gone for for my predicted 11 today let's go let's see how wrong this is going to be I think Ramsdale's going to be in goal like I said no Matt Turner in training yesterday so I think we can rule him out entirely so Aaron Ramsdale in goal I'm going for Cedric at right back I think I've gone for Cedric at right back pretty much every single Europa League tie so far I've been wrong every single time but I'm just thinking tonight I reckon he plays. He came on. He got 20 minutes at the weekend in the Premier League. I think that might have been in preparation for him starting tonight. So I'm going to go Ramsdale in goal, Cedric at right back, Rob Holding and Gabriel as the two centre backs, and Kieran Tierney as the left back. So that's my defence. Then I'm going to go El Neni, Sambi, and Vieira. I that probably is wrong. I don't know. It might well be Sambi and then Odegaard and Vieira as the uh, two more advanced role. But I'm going with El Neni. And then, yeah, so Anneni, Vieira and Sambi is the two sort of number eights. And I'm going to go Reese Nelson, of course, fresh off his two goals at the weekend. He'll be at right wing. I can't imagine Bakaya Saka's going to start this game. <laughs> I think Mikel's head would have gone if he starts uh, Bakaya in this game. So Reese Nelson on the right. Eddie Nketiah is a central striker. And then Gabriel Martinelli on the left. I think you try and get the job done with that team. If you're 2-0 up early in the second half, Martinelli gets hooked, Gabriel gets hooked. And you uh, start, you know, shifting your attention firmly to Chelsea on Sunday. But Arsenal have to win this game. They can't go. They can't play 
rest everyone, bring in all the kids because they have to win. It's so important. You can't not take advantage of the position you're in the group, end up coming second and have to play two games earlier next year, potentially against the likes of Barcelona. So this is my predicted 11 for tonight. One more time. Ramsdale, Cedric, Holden, Gabriel, Tierney, Elneny, Sambi, Vieira, Nelson, Nketia and Martinelli. Let me know, of course, if you agree, disagree with that, what starting 11 you want to see, let me know in the comments below. That's it. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Like I said earlier, I will be at the Emirates tonight, so keep your eyes peeled for all the usual match stuff from me. If you're going, have a good trip. If not, enjoy wherever you're watching around the world. Speak to you soon, everyone. Have a good day.